Hello and welcome. We are discovering that inequality relationships cover a broad spectrum of possibilities. We've introduced that solutions, like this first one, is the overlap or intersection of two statements. Writing this as a compound statement allows us to focus on only the interval of common values. It still reads as x is greater than 1 and x is less than 5. These intersection intervals can further be described as open, where the endpoints are not included, and closed intervals where they are. By combining inequality statements with the OR conjunction, we can effectively add the outcomes of each statement. These form what we describe as a union of possibilities, as our solution is the combination of all the inequality restriction statements. There can be a multitude of unions to specify different data we wish to include. In our hyperconnected world, the amount of data available to us is exploding, and the exponential growth of this information can be quite overwhelming. This leads to one of our biggest challenges, making sense of all this data. And trust that your efforts to conquer new topics like the ones we're exploring will arm you with the skills needed to better evaluate and add meaning to your findings. At this point, we need to add one more detail to how we describe the values or data in our solutions. Up until this point, we haven't been too concerned with the types of numbers in our solutions, as the focus has been on understanding, writing, and solving inequality statements, showing our solutions graphically, and using interval notation. We know, however, mathematicians have defined various subgroups of numbers that also need to be identified in our solutions. Let's extend our description of data and show how we can identify the types of numbers in our solutions. In science and math, we gravitate to quantitative data so that our results are more concrete and accurate. This type of data is often placed into two subcategories we know as discrete and continuous. These are pretty much as they sound. Discrete data has whole number values, usually of things we count, like the number of people in a line, or basketballs on a rack. There are no part people or fractions of objects like basketballs. This category would include natural and whole numbers, as well as integers. To specify the types of numbers in our solutions, we make one addition to our number lines and use set notation. When we want to show discrete data on our graph, closed circles or points are placed on the numbers to include which tells us the values in between are excluded. We include enough circles to show the pattern, and use an arrow to again show the solution has no boundary. And we add set notation as our method of specifying the types of numbers in our solution. You are likely familiar with this type of notation, a way to use symbols to detail a particular set of numbers making up our solution. This would be read as the set of all x's that are members of integers, such that x is greater than negative 2. Sometimes the type of numbers in the set are stated at the end, which is also fine. When it comes to things we measure, like time or age, they are considered continuous data. You may say you're 16, but really you're 16 point something, something that changes continuously. The same could be said for other things we measure, like temperature, speed, distance, mass, etc. So continuous data includes decimals or fractions, which means rational numbers are our choice if we are wanting to suggest the solution is continuous. A set like this would be written in set notation as, and read as the set of all y's that are members of rational numbers, such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Graph as we've been doing previously, only using circles to include the endpoints. And now when we're describing our solution sets, we can include the type of numbers. Let's consider a scenario where we might use this. You've surely experienced the endless survey requests that we're bombarded with every time we buy or do something. Everyone wants feedback on your experience. So if you do an online satisfaction survey from 0 to 10, what are the possible outcomes? And will the data be discrete or continuous? The data would fit one of 11 possible whole number values, as there are no partial values or negative numbers. So our solution set is discrete data, 
and our set notation would be the following. x is an element of whole numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 10. So a company is collecting reviews on service quality. One of the questions asked if you were satisfied with the speed of the service you received from 0, not at all, to 10, completely satisfied. Of the thousands of respondents, the company wants to focus its energy on those that were least satisfied. How would they restrict the data to find the poor reviews? They would, of course, restrict the data to, say, the closed interval 0 to 3, so greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, in interval notation like this or in set notation. This could be part of an algorithm that could also include key words or phrases from responses that respondents were invited to share. By focusing on this particular subset of respondents, efforts could be made to fix this particular service issue. We are recognizing that we live in a data-rich time. Its abundance can often create as much confusion as it can clarity. The need to discern the value of the information coming our way has never been greater as is the need to share our information with great accuracy. Using closed circles on our graphs to show discrete data, arrows and endpoints for continuous data, and adding set notation, make sure we have ways to specify the desired data we are trying to communicate. You see now we have many ways to express the outcomes of our inequality statements. In our next segment, we'll explore linear inequalities as we continue to expand our understanding of inequality relationships.